All right, how are you doing? This is Neil Fontaine, and this is the acrylic painting that I'll be teaching you how to paint in this video. It is for sale for only $136. The link's in the description. It is on flat canvas, ready to frame in a 12 by 16. Or, or if you want a mat a little bit bigger than that, it's a standard size. You want to get a custom frame. First thing I do is I start with some medium. So I'm using uh, Golden's. Uh, I guess it's it's actually it acts as both a retarder and a medium, and it's their glazing medium. It's really good. So it keeps the paint open longer on the canvas. Um, but what's good about it is you hit it with a blow dryer and it dries. So I had done my sketch first, and there's different ways to do sketches. You can uh, either grid out if you already have, if you have already drawn this before. I recommend if you're drawing something um, a lot from imagination or something like that, that you draw it first on paper, get it all worked out. They do all your racing and stuff on paper. After it's all worked out, then you can transfer it to your canvas in different ways. You can use transfer paper, you can grid it out, so you can grid out your, your image and then grid out your canvas and do it that way. Um, you can use a projector and then trace it onto your canvas. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, I like to use a projector. It works, uh, it's, it's much faster than a grid. Um, so I'm laying down my, my first layer. I'm using a lot of medium, uh, no water though. You can, you can use a little bit of water instead, but I find the medium, it, like I said, it keeps it open longer and also just adds this really nice look and feel to it. Um, I like it better than using water, but you can use water if you want to. I just, I, I recommend and prefer the medium. I'm using different colors here to kind of lay out, just so I can kind of distinguish the shapes because I'm, I'm covering over my colored pencil. And I usually just use a, a light colored pencil, works fine. You can use chalk too, but light colored pencil is great and the paint goes over it really easily. In fact, even with just a, a glazing layer, it almost covers it where I can't even see it anymore. After that, I go ahead and hit it with a blow dryer and this allows me to work on the next layer. That's what's great about, about acrylics. I'm also using Golden Opens. Uh, Golden Opens are fantastic. They stay um, open or wet on your palette without getting that little film over the top of them for many, many hours without having to miss, miss them or anything. So I really like that. But um, kind of like oils. Uh, but what's great about them is they're an acrylic. So you hit it with a blow dryer and bam, it dries. Especially thin layers, they dry really, really fast. Now it does take a little bit longer to dry with the blow dryer than, than standard um, acrylics. Now that is not open acrylics, but uh, it really, it still really dries pretty quickly. You might have to, you know, have the blow dryer on it for an extra minute for a thicker layer. But really all I need is that top layer to get, to get dry usually anyway, and you can continue going. So what I'm doing here is I, I decided that originally I was going to do this as a very abstract piece where you can barely even tell it was of a nude figure. Um, I always have a hard time doing that because I really enjoyed the human figure. And um, so instead I decided that it was going to be painted in more of a uh, impressionistic way, which still came out looking pretty realistic, and mainly that's due to form and, and color. Mainly form. Form is, like right now, look at already, you can already tell that looks like a realistic figure because the form is there. And so as long as you have the form down, and form is, is not just the outline, it's not just the contours, it's the form is mainly the light and shadow. So if you have a good realistic light and shadow, uh, which you can always get if you have a good reference photo that you're working from. Um, I'm actually going to be doing some of my wife as well. Uh, I think I like this idea of, I like how the window light lights up figures. It looks really cool. And uh, anyway, so just make sure to have the form there and everything else will fall into place and then you just got to add your colors. So the colors that I start out with is a uh, burnt umber. So that's what, that's my that was my main color, just just burnt umber with the glazing medium and putting a little bit more burnt umber where I wanted it to be a little bit darker than other places, just to kind of already start to show that form, like in her leg, for example. Her back arm actually doesn't, it's not going to be that dark. I wasn't going to have really dark like that, but I decided her front arm should be darker and the back arm should be lighter. And then um, the other color I used was magenta, uh, cornacodone, cornacodone, I don't know, I don't, <laughs> something like that said some, something like that. Anyway, um, I have to look at the word, but I think it's cronacodone, crimson, and then also uh, magenta. I, I use both of those, but in this case, I was using magenta. And I just use a dirty brush so that way the burnt umber and magenta mix right together. And it and just adds a little bit, just, just a little bit difference right away from the get-go. Um, I could have just done burnt sand everywhere, but I kind of wanted to just show a little difference. And then I added titanium white to my thalo blue and a little bit of yellow, uh, just primary yellow. Um, I think it's a uh, cadmium yellow medium, which is basically a primary yellow for the background windows there. Uh, and I kept it really light, a lot of white. 
Um, for the hair, I used a mixture. I added a little bit of phthalo blue to the burnt umber, which makes a really nice black. If you wanted to lean more toward uh, brown or warm, a warm black, then have more burnt umber. If you want it to be more of a cool black, then add more phthalo blue than burnt umber. Another color that I'm using, um, I think I actually I think I mixed a little bit into that mix. And now that I think about it, is cronacodone. Uh, no, not cronacodone. Sorry. Um, I can't remember what it's called now, Doxidine or something like that purple. Really nice purple color, mixes well with a lot of colors. And so I actually mixed some of that with uh, her hair. And I'm actually going to be using that as the primary color for her figure that mixed with flesh tone. So to make a flesh tone I use um, Cronacodone Crimson with uh, yellow which is uh, my cad cadmium. When I say yellow, um, it's always going to be referring in this painting. It's always going to be referring to most every painting is cadmium yellow um, medium. So by Golden Open, and then I add white, obviously, and then I add just a just a touch of blue. This makes it more realistic. And instead of a touch of blue, I've been adding a touch of the purple, and this adds a really really nice color. So. And right now I'm darkening up the the flesh tone. So the first thing I did a, I did a layer with the you know with just that flesh tone with just a little bit of purple and it's, it was very light flesh tone, just to make sure it's going to work. And I was deciding whether or not I wanted it really really dark. I, and the, the reference photo was almost black like the background. And I'm like I don't think I want it that way. That's one thing I don't stick to is the colors. Because um, if I'm going to change something about a photo, besides just like details and things like that. I feel like my my main expression is in the colors that I use and being able to express myself in my colors. If I'm just copying the photo 100%, you know, just like a photograph, you know, I'm just that's boring to me and I'm not expressing myself at all. I'm just being a very slow photocopier. We have cameras that do a much better job. <laughs> um, the, the photo already exists, right? So if you if you're not even the one that took the photo, the photo already exists out there. So why even bother? Um, I just don't get the point unless you're going to change it in some way. And so in this way, I wanted to not just change the details, like the window is way too detailed for me and too dirty and old and clumpy. I didn't really like that. But the colors just weren't very interesting. So um, I wanted to change the colors and obviously minus a lot of details. I didn't want none of the houses behind the windows. I wanted the windows to look like almost like a glow um, coming from outside that you can't, you can't see what's on the other side of the window. I like that. And then having this play between light and dark and different colors. So um, I believe the wood color I got with using burnt umber and a little bit of red. The cronacodone crimson really makes a really it's a really nice red. If you mix it with white, it kind of makes a fuchsia color. It's different than the naphthol red or or cadmium red. I also I also use cadmium red too, which I recommend having in your palette. Both reds are very different. Another another uh, red that's similar to that would be alizarin crimson. I don't know if Golden Open makes that color though. But if you have another paint brand that uses that color, it's a very similar color to the Cronacodone um, Crimson. Now I'm just kind of working on details. So um, the brush I use for most of this painting, believe it or not, is a angled brush. So it's kind of like a flat, except it has an angle to it. This allows you to make thin lines. It allows you to make fat lines. It allows you to use the tip of it like a, almost like a pointed brush. It really is a really versatile brush. And it, it also just I like the shapes it makes so it allows me to kind of make more of a impressionistic shapes and it's by uh, it's, a, it's the brushes I really like for acrylic are the silver ruby satins I think they're what they're called they're fantastic brushes they have a lot of snap um, to the bristles and they're soft enough but they're also stiff enough just fantastic brushes so I highly recommend trying them I actually learned about them from uh, ginger cook and I like watching her, and I and I saw that that's the brush she used. I'm like, I'm gonna try that brush, and I actually like it. it's a really nice brush. And so yeah, I'm using a lot of those same colors. That's that's my main colors on my palette, and those are the colors I'm I'm just blending them in different ratios. So uh, here it's like burnt umber with a little bit of the um, the red and a little bit of the purple, and this makes a really nice color. And then adding some white to it, uh, sometimes a little bit of yellow. But I, I kind of stick more to the cooler side of things, more to the purple and well, I guess red is warm, but more to the purple and reds rather than the orange. Orange makes things look more tan or brown, and I didn't want it, I didn't want that look to my painting, so I just stayed away from those colors. The overall time of this painting took a ride around four hours, so um, not bad for a 
12 by 16 and yeah so just think about layers I, I worked I worked in many layers as you can see on top of each other to make this painting and so don't be shy to use layers and that's pretty much it right there and I call it done and I just kind of I show some details there all right so hey if you enjoyed this do me a favor go ahead and like and subscribe I appreciate it help this channel start growing again uh, since YouTube did their thing it's like pretty much became invisible so uh, yeah like and subscribe if, if you're not getting notifications do me a favor actually do me a favor anyways if you already subscribed to the channel unsubscribe and then resubscribe and hit that bell notification that's how you reset the notification thing um, so if you're if you're not getting notifications and you want to get them that's how to do it just unsubscribe and then instantly resubscribe hit the bell notifications you'll start getting notifications um, also you can follow me on facebook and that's a good way to get notified as well i have a a new um group called uh your your abstract painting gallery your abstract painting gallery um, i post from my new channel my abstract uh, painting technique so if you haven't checked out that channel it's uh, just click on learn to draw that takes you to my channel's homepage. on the right hand side I'll show you my other channels and that's a new channel if you want to go ahead and follow me there I've been teaching how to paint traditionally with mainly acrylics but also I have some oil stuff on there I'll be showing more oil stuff to you and uh, water-based oils and show how those work uh, so yeah it's basically about traditional painting and a lot of it it's mostly all abstract so um, but different kinds of abstract too, some impressionistic stuff as well. I just did an impressionistic one, so of a red like tree, like a pine tree. It's really cool. All right, so that's it. And uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, comment if you have any questions or have any recommendations or if you have any, um, what's what I'm looking for? <laughs> a request for what I should do on this channel. For what, 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 do you want, what do you want me to cover? What, what would you like me to record um, or teach? Um, yeah, so also... Um, best-selling book still uh, actually it's number three now in its category but I can't believe that after like four years it's still number three um, without any promotion like without any like advertise or anything and so that's uh, on Amazon look up how to draw awesome figures um, and then also of course I have my website masterpainnow.com where you can see my different courses and a bunch of other free stuff and there's like over 600 videos on this channel already but if you want more like distinct or um, basically professionally done courses that are me just going point by point by point not rambling on and talking about other stuff then that's where you want to get my courses um, my videos are free so I just kind of wing it you know I don't I don't pre you know re rehearse or anything like that but if you want to get something that is done that way that is rehearsed and is done step by step and there's no filler or nothing like that it's just learn 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 then definitely get my paid for courses right now they're on sale on my website for like 10 bucks and that's normally they're like a hundred dollars so you're saving a lot of money all right thanks for watching